Hello and welcome again to this part of deep programming tutorial series. In this part, we will learn dynamic memory allocation. Along with other parts, this is also very important and is difficult to understand for beginners. Not really difficult because the syntax I have already explained. The difficulty is the concept because it is difficult to visualize heap and stack as normal human beings. We do not know internal of computer when we start programming. But as you progress, this will become your second nature. In my pointer session, I have told that there are four functions malloc, calloc, realloc, and free. malloc and calloc are used for allocating memory on heap. They have one difference. The difference is that malloc does not alter the contents of memory which it will allocate to you. But calloc will allocate as well as clear the contents set them to zero. Both of them return the generic void pointer to the area of memory allocated which you can change to any pointer type you want. Realloc is slightly different. What it does is it resizes the amount of memory you want. It resizes the existing pointer. Suppose you have allocated a pointer, let's say x, to have 10 integers, but later on let's say you want 5 or 50. Then you give the new size to realloc and the existing pointer. And then realloc will resize. If you are asking more memory, then that much memory should be available. If the memory is not available, realloc cannot give you. Obviously, malloc, calloc, realloc, none of these functions will give you memory if they cannot give you. And if they fail, then they will set the pointer to null. Free is a function which is used to deallocate memory allocated by malloc, calloc or resized by realloc. and you always use pointers to allocate memory. No other type can point to heap. Only pointers can point to heap. Therefore, you must use pointers. You must free memory after they are not needed. I have said about memory leak in past. So now the time has come when you will encounter memory leak. What happens is, suppose you are using a pointer and you allocate some memory on heap and then you do not need that pointer after a certain point of time. You do not need the values stored in that area of memory. Then you should rather must free it. There are two reasons. One is that if you are not using that memory, then you are wasting precious memory of system and there may be a time when you will need more memory but there is not enough memory. So you should free when you don't use it. Second point is, if you do not free, then there is every possibility that after a certain point of time, that pointer will go out of scope and when that happens the last reference or last pointer which is pointing to that area of memory goes out of scope then that area of memory cannot be freed anymore that means you cannot recycle or reuse that area of memory for further requirements and in the long running programs which I have mentioned earlier, like web servers, FTP servers, if this happens, eventually you will end up consuming the entire available memory of your system. 
and the system will freeze. So you must free memory when they are not needed. Should be careful of wild and dangling pointers. What is a wild pointer? When you declare a pointer and you do not initialize it, then that is called a wild pointer because you do not know where it is pointing to. A dangling pointer is one when you free it and you do not set it to something, then that pointer becomes become a dangling pointer. Should be careful while dereferencing wild pointers and dangling pointers, both of them. Set pointers to null after freeing so that you do not get dangling pointers. You should also initialize wild pointers to null. Note that dereferencing null pointers is illegal in C. That will cause your program to crash. Now it is time for hands-on session. So in this program, let's start here. I have declared a character pointer to null, initialized to null, and then I have a wild pointer, same character pointer, q. And then I allocate like this you must cast it to care pointer, both P and Q. And I have malloc and calloc. There is slight bit of difference in the syntax. malloc takes size only, returns void pointer, both of them return void pointer. So I want size for 10 characters. In calloc, you need to give the count separately and size separately. If you look at the description of calloc, it clearly says its contents are cleared to zero before calloc returns. And I have declared an integer pointer i, which I am doing a malloc. I am allocating one integer. Now we have allocated 10 characters to p and q. That's like an array of 10, very much like an array of 10. You are just not using subscript operator to operate over pointers. So I have tried to print the first three characters. If we are lucky, we will get non-zero values so as to establish the fact that malloc does not set value to zero. And if we are unlucky, you will not see zero. And then I have printed that P and it should be empty if it is zero initially or it may even crash your program because if there is no zero, then string will not terminate and you will go on printing and at certain point of time, you will have segment violation. Then I copy my string to P and then I print it. Similarly, I have printed star i. Note that I have freed E and Q and set them to null so that there is no memory leak. This is very essential and most important program, a part of program when you are dealing with heap heap area of memory. Now I have declared two structures. One is a type def version and one is non type def version. And then you see how you allocate memory. Since S is a new type by the virtue of type def, so you can use S directly. But if you use the non type def version, you must give the full name of the structure along with the keyword struct. And over here also, you must specify the full name or if you use type def, you use f. And as I have said in my uh, structure session that you, you need to use arrow operator to point to this, these members, and then you can print them and finally you free them. Note that I have not deallocated i. And if you leave such pointers, then they will cause memory leak eventually. If you run valgrind, which is available for Linux, or rational rows for uh, checking the memory uh, problems, then they will clearly point out that I should be freed. So let's run this program and uh, you can analyze the output for yourself. So we did not get garbage value or the originally stored value in memory via malloc. So perhaps you should try again. 
we got my string for p and we got 7 and a for our structure members so for basics of pointers this is very simple in our next session we will learn about pointers to pointers and realloc and when to use realloc how to use realloc and how to allocate pointer to pointers and subsequently how to free them till next session happy coding